Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 183 in the series of basic math. Today we will have our third lesson in the series of 10 on the topic of probability. If you have not watched yesterday's video and the day before yesterday's video, day 181 and 182, it is important that you watch those two videos first because what we are going to do today here will involve what we learned yesterday and day before yesterday. The problem for today, as you can see already, is on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. It says A and B, we are told that we have two people, A and B, we are told that they work independently on the problem. They work independently on the problem. Now this phrase right here is a very important part here. This is what we talked about on day number 181 as to what it means for the two events to be independent. We're not going to go into it right now. I'm assuming that you already know it. If you don't, watch day 181. So these two events we are told are independent. In other words, the odds of one has nothing to do with the odds of the other. We are told that A has a 30% chance of succeeding and B has a 70% chance of succeeding at this problem. So whatever problem they are solving here, usually they talk about solving a problem or working on something else or they, or they might even talk, uh, or the question might even say that A, a has a 30% chance of hitting a target and B has a 70% chance of hitting a target. So if they are both shooting at the target, the odds of whether or not A will hit a given target, those odds that A has has absolutely nothing to do with how, how likely or unlikely B is of hitting the target. These two events are independent. The probability of one has absolutely nothing to do with the probability of the other. Let's find out. The question is, what are the odds? What are the odds that either A or B or both will succeed? What are the odds that either A or B or both will succeed? Let's see what this says here. This problem, by the way, is something that we did yesterday. And at the end of the yesterday's video on day number 182, I told you that there are actually three methods of looking at this problem. Yesterday we did only one method, so we're going to redo. We are redoing it right now, so that we can learn. So that we can learn to look at this problem in all different possible ways. There are three different methods. There are three different ways of looking at this problem. Let's get going. The first method is going to be the exact same method as we what we did yesterday. So here's what it is. So what we are looking for, what we are looking for is the odds probability that either A or B or both will succeed. Well, let's take a look at it here. A or B. So when we talk about here is our event A and event B. First of all, right off the bat, right off the bat, as 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 I drew the as I drew the Venn diagram here, as I drew the Venn diagram of event A and B, just by looking at this picture, we can tell. Just by looking at this picture, we can tell that A and B are not not mutually. Exclusive. A and B are not mutually exclusive. That picture tells us there. And why they are not mutually exclusive, I'm going to leave it up to you, as I said already two or three times, to find out for yourself. Watch yesterday's video, day number 182. Yesterday's video, day 82, and learn what that means. What does this concept mean when we say that A and B are not mutually exclusive? If A and B were mutually exclusive, we could not have drawn the Venn diagram in this manner. If they were exclusive, if they were exclusive, it would have been drawn like this. They are not mutually exclusive. Learn it, watch the video and learn it yourself. So here we go. So the first we are talking about the odds of A happening. The odds of A happening is right here. These are the odds that A will happen. Then listen carefully. These are the odds that A will happen. Then we go on to say, what are the odds that B will happen? A or B, A or B. Here's the B. Here's the B. So by the time we talk about, what I'm trying to make you understand is that by the time we talk about the odds of A or B happening, okay, listen very carefully. By the time we talk about the odds of either A or B happening, we have already included this area right here, which represents the odds of both of them happening. Are you seeing so far? Therefore, 
therefore here's the punchline here's the payoff therefore in most textbook one more time okay by the time we talk about the odds of either a happening which is this this uh, uh, probably right here this circle right here or the odds of b happening which is this part right here by the time we talk about either a or b in speaking in terms of in, when we speak in terms of odds of either a happening or b happening it automatically includes this area it automatically includes the area that overlaps which represents the odds of both a and b happening which is why which is the reason why in the statistics textbook in the probability textbook they do not mention this word it is understood it is understood it is understood that if you're talking about the uh, if, if we're talking about the odds of either a or b happening embedded in it buried in it is a possibility that they may both happen because if either a or b can happen then if a happens if a happens or b happens well then this possibility that they may both happen right here so in most textbook instead of saying odds of a or b or both they simply say the odds of a or b are you with me so there is no difference between this concept and this concept if somebody asks you what are the odds of either a or b happening or what are the odds of either a or b or both happening these two are one and the same concept there is absolutely no difference do you understand that let's get going let's get going now i'm going to do it on the top because i want to save this thing here so we remember we have 30 percent chance and a 70 percent chance so how do we do it it's very simple it's very simple it's very simple you just have to look at this picture you don't need to memorize it the odds of a or b happening odds of a or b happening which we already said is same as the odds of a or b or both happening odds of a or b happening is same as is equal to the odds of a happening or b happening or both happening now let's get the article set going okay so First, we figure out the, what are the odds of A happening. Odds of A happening is 1 out of 3. We are told that he has a 30% chance. 30% chance, by the way, is not 1 third. We are told that he has a 30% chance. 3 out of 10. 3 out of 10. Now we move on to this one. O or B. O or B. So we add or again. Again, this is very important. The language is very important. Language is what kills the people in the probability problems because they do not master the language. There is a big difference between there is a big difference between the odds of A or B, which is what we are doing right now, and the odds of A and B. This is this is very different. This is something we did on day number 182. This is something that we did on day number 181. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is that you go in sequence. So Odds of A happening is 3 out of 10, or or means that we have to add the 2, two, 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 two probability. Odds of B happening is 7 out of 10. Now we have to take care of the fact that it is possible they may both happen because they are not mutually exclusive. Why aren't they, why aren't they mutually exclusive? Because just, because just because an event A happens or does not happen, it does not rule out the other, the nature of the problem. And this is something that you have to figure out from the problem itself. Nobody actually tells you in the problem, nobody actually tells you out loud whether or not the two events are mutually exclusive. You have to use your common sense and figure out from the problem itself that just because just because A succeeds in hitting a target, A is hitting a target, and if he succeeds in hitting the target, does that mean that it is impossible all of a sudden for B to succeed now? Of course not. Just because event A happens, it does not rule out the B. And how do I know that? But just by reading the problem and using your common sense. Do you understand? Watch the video and you will see an example where two events are, are mutually exclusive. So there we go. Or both happenings. Events A is 3 out of 10, this is 7 out of 10, or both. But this is already includes both. Odds of A happening is this part. So when we talk about the odds of A, uh, odds of A, we're talking about this part right here. And then we talk about the odds of B, we're talking about this part right here. Are you able to see? Are you able to see that this area right here that we're looking at here, this this area that we see there, is first is first counted as a part of A, and then it then it is counted again as part of B. Because of the fact that this area is counted twice, first as a part of A and then part as a part of B, because of the fact that it's counted twice, we need to get rid of it. We have to we have to get rid of one of them, minus the odds of A and B. That's how we do it. Odds of a, probability of A happening plus the probability of B happening minus the probability of A and B happening. 
I'm going to erase this part, otherwise it's going to get very confusing. Let's continue here. So instead of putting the numbers, instead of putting the numbers here already, it was too early to put the numbers. Let's, let's do it here. So this thing is same as the odds of A happening plus the odds of B happening, plus, not plus rather, minus, minus the odds of A and B happening. Why, are, why do we subtract this thing, this area? Because it's been counted twice. First is counted as a part of A, this area again is counted as a part of B. Because it's counted twice, we have to get rid of it. So let's get going. Odds of A happening, odds of A happening as we are told is 3 out, 3 out of 10. Odds of B happening we are told is 7 out of 10. And now we subtract the odds of A and B, A and B, which is simply 3 out of 10 times 7 out of 10. We have to subtract this area. So let's get going. So this is just 3 out of 10 and 7 out of 10, that's just 1. So it is 1 minus 21, seven, 3 times 7 is 21, 21 out of 100. 1 minus 21 out of 100 is going to give us, it's going to give us 1, 100 minus the 20 would have been 80, so it's going to be 79, 79 percent. So that was one method. This is a very basic method. This is a very simple method. This is a very straightforward method. This is what this is the method that kids are told by their probability teachers to memorize. I don't want you to memorize it. I want you to understand it. And the way we're going to make sure that we understand it thoroughly is by now looking at the same problem from a different now looking at the same problem from a different different perspective. Just from, let's let's do the same problem from another method. We're going to do two different methods. Let's look at second method now. I need the room obviously, so we're going to have to erase all of this thing because I don't want to erase this thing. So let's look at method number two. So this was method number one. Method number one. Now let's look at method number two. Second method. So, so far, so far everything that we have done in the video, even though we have spent quite a few time already, but so far everything that we have done in the video is the exact same thing as what we did yesterday, nothing new. Now let's do the second method. So again, one more time, we're looking for the odds of A or B or both happening, which we know is same as saying the odds of A or B happening. Because when you say A or B, this part is already included. When we talk about the odds of A happening or B happening, embedded in it, this part is already included, which is both. So this thing is same as this thing, as I keep repeating. Now, the odds of either A or B happening, the odds of either A or B happening would have to be equal to, listen very carefully, would have to equal to the odds that A might happen and B may not happen. That's one possibility, that, that A, person A might succeed in solving the problem and B fails, it is possible, and if, or if you're talking about hitting a target, it is quite possible that A may succeed in hitting the target and B does not succeed in hitting the target. That's one possibility. Or it is possible that B might succeed and A might not succeed and A might fail. So the bar on the top tells you that he does not, he does not succeed. Or there is a third possibility. Third possibility is that they may both succeed. If two people are working on a problem, if two people are working on a problem independently, you put one person in one room and you put another person in another room and you give them the exact same problem to work on, then there are three possible scenarios. There are three possible scenarios if, if you're talking about how likely it is that they may both succeed. Of course, there is also a fourth scenario that they may, that neither of them may succeed. That is true. It is possible that neither of, my, neither of them may succeed, and which is, which is going to be the third method. We're going to look at it from that point of view in a second. But if you're talking about how likely it is that, uh, that uh, either A or B or, or both will succeed, well, first scenario is that A may succeed and B may fail. Second scenario is that uh, B may succeed and A may fail. And the third scenario is that they may, all, they may both succeed. So let's take a look at it. Now all we have to do is plug in our numbers and find out the solution. I should not have done it. I should not have taken so much room here. So now I have to squeeze everything here. I shouldn't have done that. That was a damn silly thing to do here. Let's squeeze it in here. So probability of A or B, probability of A or B is same as probability of A times the probability of B may not happening plus the probability of B succeeding and, prob and A may not succeeding or A or B.
Now all you have to do is plug in the respective probabilities, we are done. The odds that A will succeed we are told is 3 out of 10. We were told that there is 70% chance that B will succeed. Well if there is a 70% chance that B will succeed, then the fact that B will not succeed is 30% chance. That part is done. Again, probability of B, probability that B will succeed, we were told is 70%, so it's 7 out of 10. We were told that there is a 30% chance that A will succeed. If there is a 30% chance that A will succeed, then the odd that A will not succeed, A will not succeed is 70%. Because he has a 30% chance of being successful, that tells us that he has a 70% chance of, if he has a 30% chance of being successful, that implies that he has a 70% chance that he will fail. So that's second part. Finally, A, it should say A and B, not A or B. This is a misprint, A or B is right here, it should say A and B. A and B. A and B is simply the probability of A, which is 3 out of 10, times the probability of B, which is 7 out of 10. Are you with me? That's it. That's another way of looking at it. Let's see what we get here. I'm going to pick up speed now. So that's going to be 3 times 3, which is 9 over 100. 9 over 100 plus 7 times 7, which is 49 over 100. Plus 3 plus times 7, which is 21 times 100. And what do you suppose we, we, what do you suppose we will get when we add up 9 plus 49 plus 21. As you can see, 9 plus 21, 9 plus 21 is 30. 30 plus 49 is 79. Is 79 over 100, which of course is the exact same answer, which of course is the exact same answer that we got from the first method. Of course, the answer is not going to change, but this is the second way. This is method number two. This is the second way method. This is the second way of looking at it. Now I'm going to do the third method here. We don't need the picture anymore. Let's look at the third way. Third way is very straightforward. Third way method number three again the probability probability that either A or B or both will succeed is same as so this continues from here is same as the probability either A or B will succeed. We already talked about it. This is just a matter of notation. Do you understand? This is just a matter of notation, which is same as which is same as saying that prob probability that at least let's not squeeze everything in here. Let's let's do it separately. Method number three. Probability that A or B or both will succeed is same as saying probability of either A will succeed or B will succeed. Probability that either A will succeed or or B will succeed. Which is same as saying which is same as saying that the odds that at least at least one will succeed. What are the odds that at least one will succeed is same as saying that if at least one will succeed which means either A or B can succeed, at least one which means they can both also succeed. That's all. This, this thing is same as asking what are the odds that at least one will succeed. Well the odds that at least one will succeed, the odds that at least one will succeed would have to be same, which have to, would have to equal one minus the, minus the odds that, minus the odds that neither will succeed neither will succeed or if you like or if you like it is same as odd that they will they will both fail they will both fail but what are the odds that they will both fail the odds that they will both fail is simply the odds of odds of a failing times the odds of b failing they will both fail which is odds of A, odds that A will fail, A has a 30% chance of being successful, there is a 70% chance that he will fail. B has a 70% chance of being successful, therefore there is a 30% chance that he will fail. So you can see 7 times 3 is 21 and this is simply 100 over 100 which is, which is 1, 100 minus 21, 100 minus 21 over 100, of course we find that it is also 79%. As you can see, no matter which way you look at it, 
you get the same answer of course that wasn't the point but the point is you have to be you have to be able to you have to be able to look at this this scenario this 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 situation that is presented to us in all from all different possible perspective and if you can do that that means you you understand the concept thoroughly you understand what's going on behind the curtain don't just don't just look at one formula and say to yourself oh my god that's the formula i have to memorize it don't look at that don't do it that way. understand it and be able to look at it as i said from a different perspective okay i'll see you tomorrow bye now